New York's Democratic Congressman Hakeem Jeffries, the top Democrat in the House. Uh, Mr. Leader, thank you for joining us. I want to start with those new charges against the president's son, Hunter. As you know, Republicans have been saying uh, that Hunter Biden was getting special treatment. But now that these charges have come out, you hear from uh, the president's son's legal team that these charges would never have been brought if his name weren't Biden. What's your sense? Is there something political here? Would these charges have been, have been brought if this was not the president's son? Well, good morning. It's great to be with you. I certainly think uh, that that's a case uh, that will be made in a compelling fashion by the president's son's attorneys, uh, and they should vigorously defend him. Hunter Biden is entitled to the presumption of innocence. The matter is before a court of law right now, and let's see how it proceeds. I think what's more important is that President Joe Biden continues to lead us forward. Uh, to focus on the things that matter, to build an economy that works for everyday Americans that's built from the middle out and the bottom up, uh, and to lean in to creating a situation where every single American in every single zip code can truly experience the American dream. But is there a frustration that you have this indictment coming again out of Biden's Justice Department that plays right into what Republicans are trying to do, which is uh, to campaign against the Biden family and suggest there's corruption there. Now you have special counsel indicting the president's son. Well, if anything, the indictment indicates that as President Biden and his administration have consistently said, uh, there is no interaction between the president, the administration and the Department of Justice which is going to simply follow the facts, apply the law, and present the truth as they see it to the American people. M meanwhile, you have uh, Speaker of the House Kevin McCarthy launching this impeachment inquiry, and he did it just days after saying he would not launch an impeachment inquiry without a full vote of the House. Obviously, the vote never happened, and he did it anyway. What's going on here? Let's be clear. House Republicans are in the middle of a civil war. The Civil War has the following attributes, chaos, dysfunction, and extremism. The House Republican Civil War is hurting hardworking American taxpayers and limiting our ability to be able to solve problems on their behalf. It's unfortunate, but as House Democrats, we're going to continue to try to find common ground with the other side of the aisle to work with Senate Democrats and Senate Republicans and President Biden, and hopefully the House Republicans will come along so that we can work to make sure we are funding the government, that we have a government that can provide for the health, the safety, the economic well-being of the American people, and we can end the partisan political gamesmanship that right now has captured House Republicans. As you know, McCarthy is saying that he is just doing this because he wants to get to the facts, and uh, they're saying this will give them new subpoena power, but the Trump Justice Department, after the first impeachment of, of uh, Donald Trump, uh, issued an opinion that the White House did not have to cooperate, did not have to produce documents or compel witnesses uh, to testify uh, unless the impeachment happened with a full vote of the House. So what's your sense? Will, will Democrats, should Democrats, uh, should the White House cooperate with, with this impeachment inquiry? The White House has cooperated, and I believe the White House will continue to cooperate because there is nothing to hide. There is no facts in the record to suggest that President Biden engaged in wrongdoing. There are no facts uh, on the record to suggest that President Biden engaged in impeachable offenses. There are no facts on the record uh, to suggest that President Biden broke the law in any way, shape, or form. This is an illegitimate impeachment inquiry. It's a product of the House Republican Civil War. Why in the world, in the middle of all the issues that we are trying to tackle, all of the problems that we are trying to solve on behalf of the American people, would House Republicans inject this illegitimate impeachment inquiry in the middle of us trying to do the business of the American people? It's quite unfortunate, it's wrong, it's distracting, uh, and it should end. So now, are you going to be able to do the business of the American people? It seems like we're headed towards a government shutdown. What's going on? Are you having back channel conversations with McCarthy or, or with Republican moderates? Where's this going? Well, it's my expectation that we will continue to have conversations as we move forward. 
Uh, Rosa DeLauro, the top Democrat on the Appropriations uh, Committee, has our full confidence. Uh, and we are ready, willing, and able to talk about moving America forward. You know, we have a vision to put people over politics. That's what we should be doing. That's why we were sent to Washington, D.C., not to make an ideological point, but to make a difference. And we're going to continue to focus on making life more affordable for everyday Americans, lowering costs, better paying jobs, safer communities, defending democracy, fighting for reproductive freedom, and, of course, building an economy that works for everyday Americans. And we urge our Republican colleagues in the House to join us. Stop fighting each other in the reckless, reprehensible Republican civil war, and let's get to the business of the American people. You and McCarthy both talked about working together when he became speaker. If it comes to this motion to vacate, and you hear Matt Gates and, and other McCarthy critics saying that they are moving in that direction, they're going to try to remove him as speaker. Will, will you, will Democrats help bail McCarthy out? Are you going to be there to, to help him, or are you going to go along with the effort to, to oust him? Well, we haven't given it any thought one way or the other because, John, uh, as I've indicated, we're going to continue to focus on solving problems for the American people. Now, if that moment presents itself, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. But what we should be focused on right now is avoiding an unnecessary government shutdown that will hurt the ability of our economy to continue to recover, which President Biden has led a tremendous recovery to date. And that shouldn't be interrupted because of partisan political gamesmanship. OK, we, obviously, this is happening against the backdrop of the UAW strike. Are you going to Detroit? Are you with the uh, auto workers on this? I'll be heading to Detroit a little later on today, looking forward to standing uh, in solidarity with the United Auto Workers, who are fighting for the fundamental American dream, which is... Quite simple. If you work hard and play by the rules, you should be able to provide a comfortable living for yourself, for your family, educate your children, purchase a home, and one day retire with grace and dignity. That's the principle upon which the United Auto Workers are standing, and I stand with them. How long do you think this is going to drag on? Well, I think it's all of our hope that it'll end sooner rather than later. Uh, but record profits have been generated. Incredible economic uh, prosperity has been generated for the corporations upon whom the UAW works with. And so I think it's only fair that everyone share in those record profits in the prosperity that has been created. That's a fundamental American principle. That's why we were able to build in the aftermath of World War II the great American middle class. And we need to keep that going for everyone. OK, I, I have to ask you something uh, that your predecessor, Nancy Pelosi, uh, said this week. She was asked a very direct question about Kamala Harris uh, as, as Joe Biden's running mate. Uh, let me play the exchange. Is Vice President, President Kamala Harris, Harris the best running mate for this president? He thinks so. And that's what matters. But do you think she is the, the best running mate, though? She's the vice president of the United States. So people say to me, well, why isn't she doing this or that? I said, because she's the vice president. But why couldn't she directly answer the question about whether or not Kamala Harris is the best running mate for Joe Biden? How far be it for me to ever speak for Nancy D'Alessandro Pelosi, the greatest speaker of all time. She's very capable of answering that question on her own. I will say uh, that Vice President Harris has been a great vice president. She'll be a great running mate. She's been a tremendous partner in the things that President Biden has been able to accomplish, which have been phenomenal, not just rescuing the economy in the aftermath of the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, but fixing our crumbling infrastructure, clean water in every single community, bringing domestic manufacturing jobs back home to the United States of America through the Chips and Science Act, standing up for our veterans, gun safety legislation for the first time in 30 years, and of course, capping the price of insulin at $35 per month for millions of Americans. President Biden has led that effort. House Democrats and Senate Democrats have worked with the administration to okay. get those things done. Vice President Harris has been a tremendous partner. All right, Hakeem Jeffries, the Democratic leader in the House, thank you for joining us. Thank you, John.
Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.